Following the immense destruction of the Thirty Years' War, the reign of Elector Ferdinand Maria would bring about a well-needed period of stability and peace to Bavaria. At every turn he would choose to avoid embroiling his country in war, instead focusing on its internal development. Having inherited his father's knack for frugal spending and sound economic policy, it soon grew quite wealthy, and lacking an ambitious foreign policy, the excess money could be spent sponsoring the arts. His reign is thus remembered for a blossoming of culture and for the introduction of the Italian Baroque to Bavaria. Born in 1636, Ferdinand Maria was the eldest son of Maximilian, the first Bavarian elector. His mother was Maria Anna of Austria, making him the grandson of his namesake and godfather, Emperor Ferdinand II. He was educated by the Jesuits, and was at the mere age of 14 thrust into the role of elector. His father had passed away from old age, but in preparation for this, he had left his heir with a set of practical instructions for how a good prince should act. He also left a will detailing who should lead the young elector's regency council. The honour fell upon his mother, Maria Anna, but since the laws of the Holy Roman Empire excluded women from this position, she was ultimately forced to rule from the shadows. The official regent then would be the young elector's uncle, Albert, who would hold that title for three years. In 1654, now aged 17, Ferdinand Maria took on the reins of power. His style of leadership, characterized by absolutism and the further centralization of the state, would become a benchmark for the rest of Germany. Although Bavaria at this point had already paid back its war debts, the scars of the conflict were still clearly evident. Thus, the elector's main focus would be the regeneration of his battered country. Measures were taken to support the peasantry, increase agricultural production, and although generally unsuccessful, some early industries were set up based on French models. One of his more eccentric projects involved plans for a Bavarian colony near New York, although this was soon abandoned on account of his cautious foreign policy. The reconstruction of the country took on a more tangible form with the rebuilding of numerous churches and monasteries that had been damaged in the war. Many new ones were also constructed, and those that had been closed down in the recently conquered Protestant region of Upper Palatinate were reopened. Just three years into his reign, Ferdinand Maria was faced with a choice that would define his time in power. Emperor Ferdinand III, who happened to be his uncle, had passed away, and seeking to curb Habsburg influence, the French began to push Ferdinand Maria as a candidate for his replacement. Although the late emperor had a son, succession was not hereditary, and with an influential backer like France, he might just have been able to oust the Habsburgs from imperial power. But in the end, he backs down, wishing to avoid a conflict. In return, he is granted the title of Imperial Vicar, an important post which had been the subject of a lengthy dispute between Ferdinand Maria and the elector of the Palatinate, Karl Ludwig. In the 1660s, he even supported the Habsburgs in their wars against the Ottomans by sending Bavarian auxiliary forces. This marks the only military endeavour of his reign, and one that didn't put his own country in danger. Despite becoming an official ally of France in 1670, he kept out of the Franco-Dutch War. Had he decided to join, the French would have provided him with 400,000 dollars a year, but since they had previously committed to 180,000 dollars a year for his alliance, he instead used these funds to reform and expand his army. The cultural aspect of his reign was due not so much to Ferdinand Maria himself, but to his wife, Henriette Adelaide. She was a princess of Savoy, a duchy located in the border region between Italy and France. As her father had passed away when she was just one year old, she had been brought up by her art-loving mother, Princess Christine of France. At her vibrant court in Turin, Henriette also developed a great love for painting, music and architecture, which she would eventually bring with her to Bavaria. The marriage between Henriette and Ferdinand Maria took place by proxy when they were both just 14 years old. The arrangement was not the first choice of either party. The Bavarians would have preferred a princess that could speak German, while the Savoyards had early sought to marry Henriette with no one less than the French crown prince, later to become Louis XIV. Nonetheless, the marriage went through, and two years later, in 1652, she for the first time set foot in her new country. By then, the old elector Maximilian had passed away, and Bavaria was ruled by Ferdinand's mother. 
she would give a cold greeting to Henriette, placing herself at the head of courtly opposition to this foreign princess. Even after Ferdinand came to power in 1654, his mother would exert considerable influence, but in the end, Henriette and her foreign entourage would leave a lasting impact on Bavaria. She brought with her Italian opera, comedy and music, leading to the construction of a freestanding opera house in 1657, the first of its kind to be built in what is now Germany. Following the birth of their first and long-awaited son in 1662, the electoral couple commissioned the Theatine Church in Munich as a gesture of thanks to God. Henriette played a leading role in its construction, inviting numerous skilled builders from Italy to carry it out, including the architect Agostino Barelli. Then, in 1664, they commissioned the Grand Nymphenburg Palace on the outskirts of the city to serve as their summer residence. This building was also designed by Barelli, and by now local builders had been largely replaced at the court by Italian masters. They also purchased the second largest lake in Bavaria, Lake Starnberg, for which they constructed a whole fleet of Venetian gondolas. The largest ship, called the Bacantar, was named after and based on the state barge of the Doges of Venice. At 29 meters long and roughly 8 meters wide, it had room for about 150 rowers, 2 masts and 16 cannons. The ship was built by Venetian experts, but decorated by local artists in the colors of Bavaria, white and blue. Over the years, the fleet would be the venue of many magnificent parties, sometimes taking place at night and involving displays of fireworks. The Bacantar would also serve as a ballroom, a stage, and, apparently, as a diving platform for Ferdinand Maria. It was, however, extremely difficult to maneuver on account of its flat bottom. In a letter to her family in Turin, Henrietta Adelaide describes how the ship was once driven out into the lake by a sudden storm. Everyone, especially she, panicked, although her eldest daughter, then still just six years old, tried to comfort her. Eventually, the boat went ashore, and the family ended up spending the night in a small farm with the princess sleeping in a straw basket. As thanks for surviving the ordeal, a pilgrimage was made to Altötting, where they donated a silver model of the ship. Another, much longer trip was undertaken the next year, in 1667. For four months, the couple were traveling throughout Italy, culminating with a papal visit in Rome. On their way, they also stopped at various pilgrimage sites, but above all, the trip meant a further cultural enrichment. Their lives would take a drastic turn when in April of 1674, a fire broke out in the Munich residence. The family and their court were taken completely off guard, and Henriette had to risk her own life to save the children, taking them to the nearby Theatine Monastery. By the time the flames had been put out, several halls had been completely burned out, and many artworks destroyed. The electoral family, however, were all okay, with the exception of Henriette. Having rushed out barefoot when the fire broke out, she now caught a severe cold from which she would never completely recover. After two years of suffering, she finally passed away in 1676, aged 40. Ferdinand Maria would outlive his wife by just three years. They were both buried in the crypt of the Theatine Church, which they had once had built.